the tornado. It's hard to believe we are drawn to such a deadly force of nature. Perhaps because its formation is a unique mix of weather ingredients that occurs more often in the Midwest than they do anywhere else on Earth. Strong tornadoes, like the Manhattan tornado, form from a thunderstorm called a supercell. Supercells operate just like a car. You have to have fuel, you have to have a spark, and you have to have an exhaust system. All the same applies to a supercell thunderstorm. Warm, humid air is the fuel, like gas to a car. A cold front or a dry line helps to lift the air, creating a thunderstorm, like starting your car with a key. And the storm needs to breathe, like the exhaust system in your car. The supercell exhaust system is very different from other thunderstorms. It rotates. A rotating thunderstorm can be especially strong, capable of producing a deadly onslaught of hail, just like the softball-sized hail in Manhattan in June of last year. Damaging winds up to 100 miles per hour, flash flooding rains, deadly lightning, but what catches the most attention here in the Midwest is the tornado. Supercell thunderstorms can last for hours, and when the conditions are right close to the ground, the supercell can spin up a tornado, just like it did multiple times as the Manhattan supercell did from Abilene to Chapman to Manhattan to Soldier to the Kansas-Nebraska border. Alex Harrington, KTKA 49, ABC News. With afternoon temperatures as cold as this, it's hard to believe that many climate scientists argue that our atmosphere is warming up too quickly. And they say a lot of it's because of this, carbon dioxide. Some of these scientists say there's too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Now imagine this steam from this hot bucket of water as heat rising from the earth and this notebook as greenhouse gases. And as the heat rises, some of it's blocked by the notebook and sent back to the bucket like heat being sent back to the surface of the earth. And that is why some scientists say we are warming up. Before, scientists heavily relied on satellites to measure greenhouse gases. Now scientists are banding together all over the world to get the best measurement of carbon dioxide. The mission has them very excited. The things that excite me about this project, is the first time we've been able to look in great detail at the whole globe all at once. They will be flying all over the globe at different heights in the sky for the next five years. So when we finish up, we'll have a completely new picture about how greenhouse gases are entering the atmosphere and being removed by the atmosphere, both by natural processes and by humans. From there, scientists gain better insight into the future of our climate than ever before. This will allow us to make better predictions of carbon dioxide concentrations in the future, which will allow us to better plan for ways to deal with global climate change. Alex Harrington, KTKA 49, ABC News. Welcome back to Main Street Live in the Compton and Morning Meteorologist Alex Harrington. We're roughly one mile away from the Kansas River and day, hot day like today might want to go down there and do a little boating. But there have been times you need a boat not just on the river but well outside in its banks. I spoke to one woman who talked about a time when that was the case, the great 1951 flood. Rain. No doubt we'll take every drop we can get. Oh, it started raining. I don't know if it's April or May, but it rained every day. But Francis Sanford and folks in Northeast Kansas didn't want to see even one more drop by July of 51. Oh, it was so tired of the rain because it rained all day and most of the night. Flooding was already common across the area. The water kept building up, building up. But it was about to get much worse during the second week of July. When inches and inches of rain fell right here in the Kansas River near Lecompton. And that's when the Kansas River went from swollen like this to a river gone wild. And one word described the land from Topeka to Lawrence. Underwater. And there was only one form of transportation. The people were being taken out by, by rowboat. The Kansas River crest below the Lecompton Bluff, 30.23 feet. That's 13 feet above flood stage. Fortunately for Lecompton itself. We, we're living on the high bluff over here, so it didn't come into Lecompton. Mm -hmm. For everyone else close to the Kansas River. Large trees were in their front yards and on their houses and in their houses. And the mud, the silt, people started digging out. And the mud was, oh, maybe two feet deep in the houses. Francis can't help but laugh at the thought of all the damage such a flood could mean in the Kansas River Valley today. She knows just what she'll do if another one comes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pack my sack and I'd go. <laughs>